Some of which was also um, seemed sort of like Joel is fed up with the whole situation, called it borderline disrespectful, went back and talked about how we got rid of Jimmy Butler to appease Ben Simmons and his need for the ball, and you're not here with us. It does feel like we're reaching a breaking point here, and the longer this goes, the more it looks like the Simmons team is not bluffing about, yeah, we'll light $32 million on fire if that's what it takes to get out of here. Brian, let me ask you real quick. Does this expedite the process of a potential trade? Well, that's really the situation that is an unknown. Um, only the 76ers know what offers that they are holding. And I know that there hasn't been a lot of movement uh, publicly, but I was just talking to some teams in the last few days that say there's still dialogue going on. Um, but what I do think that this does is it is going to be another talking point. You know, the next time the Sixers face the media, the next time Doc Rivers faces the media, he's going to get asked about it. We just had a 24-hour news cycle about what Joel Embiid said. Now we're going to have a 24 to 48 hour news cycle about this non-payment and every single day that the 76ers camp is disrupted it again increases the pressure on them to do something about it now ultimately the results of the games are going to speak loudest but um, this is a being a very disruptive thing here we are a week into training camp and we have got daily reports on movements in this this is just not a way to run a team and it is not a way to be a healthy organization and that's the, the, the situation that they're in all right, now on ESPN.com, Bobby, you broke down all of the teams in the league's chances of making a deal with the Sixers for Ben Simmons. You broke it down into five tiers. Here's a look at the teams most likely to be in the hunt, the Trailblazers, the Cavs, the Pacers, the T-Wolves, the Spurs, and the Raptors. Bobby, which of these potential deals makes the most sense for both teams here? Well, I think when you look at teams like Portland, certainly with, with C.J. McCollum, I think with San Antonio, with players like Derek White and Deontay Murray, um, I think those are the two teams that probably makes the most sense. But the one thing to keep in, in mind is that we're one week into training camp. Everybody loves their roster right now, right? Nobody is going to make a deal and shake up their roster until maybe we get into that early part of November and a team thinks they're a Ben Simmons player away, they're struggling at that point. It's hard to make these type of deals in, in training camp, but when you take that, the 29 teams and you put them into five different categories, really there's only five or six teams that have the right pieces to make a Simmons type deal. Zach, who do you look at on that list and say, this is a team I think makes sense? Well, what I look on that list is when you flash the Portland screen up, the three words that are most interesting to Philadelphia were off the table in front of Damian Lillard because they would like Damian Lillard to be very much standing on the table waiting to be acquired. I do think Portland makes the most sense in a, in a straight Ben Simmons, CJ McCollum swap. The problem is I think both GMs involved, Daryl Morey and Neil Olshay, would say, hey, we're trading the better player. You got to throw something in to make us do it. And that's a stalemate that I don't think is going anywhere anytime soon. I think a wild card in there, Bobby mentioned San Antonio, that's one. Another team that I'm looking at, particularly if they got off to a slow start, a team that's got a lot of overlapping personnel, underachieved last year, made a huge coaching change, and that's Indiana. And they've got a lot of interesting players that could fit with Joel Embiid. The problem is they only have one guy who's an all-star, and that's DeMontis Sabonis, and he was kind of the last all-star that made it in. I just think Philly is looking at those pieces, and he's obviously a center. He plays the same position as Joel Embiid. I think Philly would look at a Malcolm Brogdon or a Karis LeVert and say, wait a second. Ben Simmons made All-NBA two seasons ago. We got to get someone of commensurate value. We're trying to win right now. It's going to be really hard to make a deal. Wendy, what do you think? Yep, Zach just hit it. I think the sleeper team in this whole situation is the Indiana Pacers. Uh, first off, I know that they don't have an all-NBA or NBA player to trade. I realize that. But they have a bunch of really good players. And as Bobby illustrated in that list, they control all of their picks. That is not like the Portland Trailblazers. They don't control that trade a package of players and picks the way a team like Indiana can. Plus, Kevin Pritchard likes to trade for guys who are under contract. They know that they're never going to be a free agent destination. So when they trade for a guy like Victor Oladipo, who has 
Or they trade for a guy like Karis LeVert, who has a bunch of years left. They like that. They love the idea of being able to trade for a player like Ben Simmons, who they would have team control over. It makes a lot of sense, especially because with as much talent as they have and as much money as they're spending, I still think they're just in the middle of the pack in the, um, in the Eastern Conference. And they've got a premium coach now in Rick Carlisle. You can try to add a premium talent there. Uh, I think they are sitting there waiting for the Sixers to come to terms with make the best deal they can because I think they can put forth an offer that few teams can rival. Basketball fans certainly love a transaction, so I'm sure plenty are tuning in right now and are scrolling to get to this Bobby article on ESPN.com. There's a second tier as well with some very interesting teams and names here. The Hawks, the Celtics, the Pelicans, and the Warriors. Bobby, which one there makes some sense? Well, the one team that intrigues me a little bit is Atlanta, and I don't think many people have talked about it. And, it, and just because of the fact that eventually they're going to have to make a decision on players like Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, they, they have the big contracts with uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic, um, Danilo Gallinari here. That's something for down the road, uh, especially if this team struggles uh, and there's a lot of expectations in Atlanta to get to potentially an Eastern Conference Finals. But the Hawks intrigue me just because of a Ben Simmons, Trey Young backcourt. Zach, where do you lie on this one? I think the Hawks strike me as a team that's like, wait a second, wait a second. We just made the conference finals. We're, we're good. We're rising. A shakeup of that magnitude right now almost feels premature and unnecessary, even with what Bobby just said about they're going to have to consolidate some of these players down because they can't pay everybody. The wild card team to me there is Boston because when we talk about good teams, good teams that control all their picks – we don't hear about the Celtics very much. And the Celtics, I think, would be looking at a situation where we're not trading Jalen Brown, we're not trading Jason Tatum, but hey, we got all these picks, we got all these swaps, we can get in on these trades. The problem is it would have to be a three-team trade because they're not trading Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. They like, I think, the idea of Simmons plus Tatum plus Brown is this sort of three supersized wings, all good defenders. Simmons can screen and run and pass. I think that's an interesting one, but I think it would have to be a tricky three-team trade. Brian? A three-team trade is a no-team trade. I know they happen, but they die 99% of the time. I don't like the fit for any of these, uh, you know, to, to, make them, to, to make it simple. And I can tell you, I, know, I understand why Bobby put the Warriors on here, but we can scratch the Warriors because their owner just got fined $50,000 for saying we're not trading for Ben Simmons. So I don't think that's going to happen in the short term. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for joining us here to start the show. Appreciate it, man. Great to see you. Thanks, guys. You got it. All right, coming up.